let us discuss about the histology of the oral cavity so the learning objectives will be to identify and describe the microanatomy of the oral cavity so the oral cavity as you all know uh, it is the initial part of the alimentary system or the digestive tract so it is guarded by the lips upper lip and the lower lip and uh, then we are having the cheeks on the sides so the roof it is formed by the hard palate in front and the soft palate behind and in the floor we see the tongue so along with these structures we are having uh, just behind the lips we are having the gums and the teeth so the teeth we are having the upper jaw and the lower jaw teeth so then, then we are having inside the oral cavity the hard palate the soft palate along with the uvula and uh, we are having the tongue then we are having the mandibular teeth lower lip and lower jaw so we will discuss the histology of the oral cavity in the further slide so what are the functions of the oral cavity so oral cavity it is a combination of organs and tissues performing a set of functions so the first is chewing that is uh, chewing it is performed by the teeth the teeth they chew the food whatever we take in then we are having the important function of uh, speaking that is vocal that uh, helps with the help of teeth tongue lips and the palates then we are having the digestive function because of the presence of enzymes present in the saliva in the oral cavity and the permeability of the mucous membrane it helps to absorb the stuff then uh, the protective function it is performed with the help of uh, substances and cells that exist in the saliva such as lysosomes interferons and leukocytes and as well as by the selective permeability of the epithelium of the mucous membrane tonsils also have great importance in provision of this function that is palatal pharyngeal and the lingual tonsils so then we are having a very important function that is sensitive sensitivity that is feeling of pain as well as feeling of taste and tactile feeling uh, they are provided with the help of uh, receptors and the taste sensitive papilla of the mucous membrane of the bones that take part in the formation of the oral cavity they are the jaws and the hard palate muscles and connective tissue it consists of the lips cheeks soft palate and the floor of the mouth so the rest or the oral cavity we divide, we call it as in vestibule and it is uh, divided by the arch of teeth into two parts one is the frontal or the vestibular part so this frontal or the vestibular part of the mouth also called as vestibulum oris now it is a space between the lips outside and the cheeks and teeth and gingiva from inside now the ducts of the parotid salivary glands they open in the area that is uh, second to the upper molar tooth and uh, in the area of the central incisors and the canines due to uh, the fold of the mucous membrane the lateral and the uh, we can say the lateral and the central frenulum so the proper oral cavity uh, we call it as cavitus oris propria which is bordered by teeth from the front uh, at the top by hard palate and the soft palate now at the bottom if we see the it is formed by the mouth and the tongue so but uh, behind if we see there is the uh, we can also say it as the entrance to the throat or the posterior pharyngeal wall now histologically if we see the oral mucosa it consists of the epithelial lining then we are having the lamina propria and the deep layer that is a submucous layer resting upon the bone so if you see over here the epithelial lining uh, we are having all the layers of the stratified squamous keratinized epithelium it is resting on the basement membrane so here you can see this is the basement membrane and the Uh, basement membrane on the basement membrane lies the stratum basale then we are having the prickle cell layer here you can see this is the stratum granulosum and above it we are having the uh, this you can see this is the cornified layer now this epithelium that is a stratified squamous keratinized epithelium it rests upon the basement membrane which is interface between the epithelium and the connective tissue layer 
now below the basement membrane we are having this is a lamina propria now what is lamina propria it is a connective tissue of variable thickness and it supports the epithelium uh, we divide this uh, lamina propria into two that is the superficial part that is a papillary part and d part that is the reticular part now this uh, lamina propria it consists of connective tissue along with uh, blood vessels and the nerve fibers in it so deep to it deep to the lamina propria we are having the submucous layer so this submucous it attaches the mucous membrane to the underlying uh, structures that is a bone and here you can see this is a bone and this is a periosteum and in this submucosa you also see the minor salivary glands in it so here you can see this is a picture or uh, we'll see it under the microscope this is the lining epithelium that is stratified squamous uh, keratinized epithelium now this is lamina propria consists of the superficial papillary layer consists of loose connective tissue and then we are having the deep reticular layer made up of the dense connective tissue then uh, the deepest layer that is submucous layer it consists of minor salivary glands nerves and veins and this submucosa it rests upon the bone now in the oral cavity we are having three different types of oral mucosa that is the masticatory mucosa lining mucosa and the specialized mucosa so this masticatory mucosa it forms almost 25% of the total mucosa of the oral cavity and it is found in the gingiva and the heart palate so the primary uh, this primary mucosa we also call it as a primary mucosa and it is in direct contact with the mastication and the lining epithelium it is usually keratinized in the masticatory mucosa then we are having the lining mucosa so this lining mucosa it forms almost 60% of the total oral mucosa and it covers the floor of the mouth then under surface of the tongue uh, then alveolar mucosa cheeks lips and the soft palate so it does not uh, have the function in any function in the mastication so this uh, mucosa it has minimum attrition so this mucosa it is now non keratinized mucosa usually seen in the it is usually it is soft and it is pliable so then we are having the third type that is a specialized mucosa it forms a 15% of the total mucosa it covers the dorsal surface of the tongue and it is Uh, composed of the cornified epithelial papillae so this uh, the mucosa of the tongue will study in detail in the histology of the tongue so here you can see lining mucosa lining epithelium non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium the other layers that is lamina propria submucosa and this is a muscle layer so if we see the masticatory mucosa it is keratinized stratified squamous epithelium resting upon the lamina propria and deep to it we are having the bone so the specialized mucosa it is seen in the tongue and we will study it in detail in the histology of the tongue so here you can see this is now the histological picture of the palatal mucosa so it is uh, covered by a thick stratified squamous epithelium here you can see which is supported by the lamina propria consists of dense collagenous fibers then uh, this lamina propria uh, now it is bound deep to the underlying bone by a dense submucosal tissue and uh, we also call it as submucosal layer and this layer it consists of few salivary glands so this was uh, this was all about uh, the histology of the oral cavity i hope you understood the different types of oral mucosa and their lining epithelium so uh, if we see in viva point of view you should know the lining epithelium of the oral mucosa that is very important and epithelial lining usually it is very very important so you should know about it thank you once again